Batteries in boats, they're the vein of all buddies' existence. They drive me crazy, but you need good batteries in your boat. And for a long time, I've been using AGM batteries. I love them. I've just gone over to lithium, but there's a big difference between AGM, lithium, deep cycle batteries, crank batteries, all that sort of stuff. This video is all about the batteries you need for your boat and why you could probably choose lithium over AGM, AGM over lead acid, whatever you want to do, but check this out. So I ended up putting a fair bit of thought into the batteries I'm going to put into this boat here because I started off with two and then I realized I needed the third one for the sounders because the sounders draw a fair bit of power if I'm away for two or three days fishing. They're link sounders so I can't run them separately so to have the front sounder running I need the sounder on the dash to be working because they're linked up through the same transducer so two big sounders drawing a fair bit of power. So what I decided to do was keep the lithium battery up the front for the electric motor and lithium batteries I'm going to talk about in just a sec are amazing for that sort of thing. And I thought about a lithium, a lithium sorry, battery up the back for the sanders as well. But then I sort of got to thinking, well, I've got a cranking battery and now I've got a deep cycle battery for the sanders. Now the difference between the two, the deep cycle battery is designed to draw a lot of power over a long period of time, where a cranking battery really just goes bang and punches a lot of amps out really really quickly to get an engine started but this is a thousand cc engine so around about 60 cubic inches in the old scale and the old rule of thumb has always been you need about one cold cranking amp per cubic inch to get an engine going so you don't need a lot of cold cranking amps to get a 60 cubic inch going so if you had a hundred cold cranking amps battery you'd fire this thing up no problem at all that would fire out those amps really quickly and fire this engine up so while deep cycle batteries aren't designed to be a cranking battery if i did ever have a problem with my cranking battery at the, at the back here i could wire it all over to the deep cycle battery and that deep cycle battery has more than enough power or cranking amps to fire this thing up so it's a bit of security and where I live that's really important to me but it may not be important to you so you've got to think about that. I live up on Cape York, far north Queensland, it's very very remote and I do a lot of trips that are in the middle of nowhere so I need that security so it's important for me to think about what's going to happen if so and so and so and so. So that's left me with the lithium battery up the front to run the electric motor, a big deep cycle battery to look after my sanders and a good standard cranking battery to run the, the lights, the bilge pump, the gauges, all that sort of stuff and get this thing going. So you're probably asking yourself, why don't I just put a lithium battery as a spare battery to run the sander and use that as a crank battery if I ever need to? Well, the answer to that is that lithium battery isn't recommended as a crank battery. They have a battery management system in them and if you burn that out or damage that, you just got to throw the battery away. And the other thing a lot of people don't realize about lithium is that they don't fade like a normal uh, lead acid or AGM battery. Where a lead acid or AGM battery, the lights will start to dim, the engine would be slow to start and it'd stand really sluggish and you'd start freaking out and think, oh, well, I better get home. And a lithium battery, when it runs out of power, just stops. So the lights will burn brightly and then the whole thing will just cut out. So look, it's probably not a great idea to put a lithium battery as a spare battery that you're going to use as a crank battery if you really need to. So look, it just made a lot of sense for me to go for an AGM battery to run the sounder because it gives me a lot of options if I ever need it. Well, my little fishing boat here has got two batteries in it. The reason why I do that is I run a separate battery for the electric motor up the front and the battery here at the back, that just runs my sounder and my lights and bilge and stuff like that. Now that's really important because if I didn't have a separate battery for the electric motor, every time I use it, it creates a lot of draw, so it puts interference in on the sander and I just want a nice clean sander screen. Look, if that's not important to you, of course you can just have one battery in a little boat like this. So the reason why I chose a lithium battery to run this Minn Kota is because lithium batteries allow you to use nearly all of their draw. So, um, what a lot of people don't realize, if you have a 100 amp hour lithium battery and you have a 100 amp hour AGM battery, the AGM battery can only draw down about 50% of its charge and it's buggered, where a lithium battery can draw down to 80% of its charge. So therefore, 
a 100 amp hour lithium battery is effectively an 80 amp hour lithium battery where an AGM battery of the same power is only a 50 amp so you get a lot more power out of the lithium than what you do with the AGM. Now lithium is a lot more expensive although it come down in price quite a lot. I only paid $700 for the 100 amp hour lithium battery where I'm paying $250, $300 for an AGM now these days. So the big difference is though if you draw an AGM really hard and draw it right down to that 50% all the time you'll only get about 300 charges roughly out of it and you'd have to throw it away but if you drew it down to 15, 20% you'll get you know a thousand or two thousand charges out of them so depending on how you look after the AGM battery depending on how much uh, how many times you can recharge it but with the lithium battery you'll get about two thousand or more charges out of it even if you drew it all the way down to zero every time you used it the other thing is that I only use about 15 20 percent of the battery most of the time when I go out for a fish so this battery could probably outlast the boat my age probably outlasts me now to look after a battery there's only two things you really have to worry about the temperature and the charging of them so temperature is really important if you have a look at this scale i found here i dug around on the internet because i heard about this a long time ago and if you can get a battery charged up in the optimal temperature which is around that 15 degrees to say 25 degrees then you'll get a lot more charge out of your battery so keep them out of engine bays keep them out of hot environments and if you've got a hatch you can open up to keep your keep your battery cool or warm depending on where you live then it's a good idea to look after the temperature of your battery not always possible but one thing you can do is keep them on charge now the interesting thing about lithium compared to gel batteries or AGM batteries or lead acid batteries is a lead acid battery wants to be fully charged all the time and it's a good idea to keep them on a trickle charge like this one this is a, a big 20, uh, 25 amp battery charger so it throws a lot of power into the battery really quickly and it's a seven stage battery charger so the final stage is a trickle charge it'll keep the battery nice and topped up but from all those things I've read about lithium batteries they don't need to be topped up they don't need to be trickle charged and they actually prefer to be stored at about half charge so I get home from fishing I throw my less my AGM battery or I've got a lead acid battery back there too as a cranking battery but my AGM battery goes on charge first gets topped right up I throw my lithium battery on charge and then I keep my AGM on trickle charge now if you don't have a big charge like this this big 25 amp Something like a CTEC charger. This is a 15 amp CTEC charger, I believe. No, it's only 10 amp. 10 amp CTEC. You can also get a smaller 5 amp. Look, they're great because they're a cycle charger. So a smart charger, if you like, although they use the term smart charger for just about everything these days, but they they charge it up in a cycle, and you can even recondition your batteries with these type of things. Different settings for compared to a like an AGM battery or a gel battery and stuff like that so really good investment look after your batteries really important keep them charged all the time especially AGM or uh, wet gel batteries now the lithium battery is also ideal in the front of this boat because it's so much lighter most batteries in 100 amp hour are around about 30 kilos in a AGM type battery or a gel battery but it's only 15 kilos so half the weight in a lithium battery and as most people know in boats weight is so important it decides so much of the performance of the boat so going light is much better but one thing I do need to warn you about with lithium batteries you hear it all the time that you can drain the lithium battery down to nothing recharge it and it doesn't hurt it well that's just not the fact the truth is a AGM or a gel battery or a wet acid battery drained down to zero um, it really does affect that battery's life quite a bit but with lithium battery it doesn't affect it quite as much but still you can't draw any battery down to zero run it dead flat then recharge it back up and expect it to have no effect at all it does damage the battery a little bit like I said not as much with the lithium battery but if you just keep your lithium battery topped up all the time like I just said before it'll outweigh it'll outlast the boat and probably outlast you as well mm -hmm.